Hold on a second, we got a fort in every single province and we got 154% defensiveness and assault fort ability minus 75% so basically impossible for anyone to even take our forts and the best part is that they're free. 3.45 ducats for 28 fortifications because of this awesome monument that Georgia just got in the EU4 King of Kings DLC that we're gonna be highlighting today. Now at first glance you will think that the monument they have in uh, Tbilisi see their capital is just uh, average 50% defensiveness minus 100% fort maintenance which means it is a free fort and minus 75% assault ability that is actually a massive debuff for anybody that's trying to assault the fort really massive debuff but then check it out that is for level one for the province of Tbilisi if we go to level two it's for the entire area that means uh, this particular area the three provinces Kartli, Kakerti and Tbilisi and two of these are mountainous provinces so just having two forts here means automatically you get 50% um, fort defensiveness plus the monument you go up to 100% uh, defensiveness you add this up here and you get 133% defensiveness you can get some more ideas and other stuff that adds up to it but most importantly the third level of the Narikala fortress guys gives owned provinces in the region have this this bonus this is just really fucking insane you guys want to see how big the region is this is the region so we essentially have what 20 to 30 provinces that will have a fortification in every single province for free with roughly a hundred plus defensiveness in every single one of those provinces and minus 75% fort assault ability for whoever's trying to assault it. This is just ridiculous. It means that if you want, you can do a playing toll run as the Georgians, or you can play wide as wide as you want, but your homelands, your heartlands of the Caucasus area will have so much defensiveness that it's virtually impossible for anyone to take all of this without completely draining their manpower pool. Even the Ottomans would struggle, would probably fail in the process, and we can take advantage of this from a very early part of the campaign. I'm gonna show you guys today how you can make Georgia an absolutely OP nation with this particular monument. And for just 7,000 likes, I'm also gonna do a video on Melikates, which can form Armenia and has its own unique insane flavor that they added in uh, 1.36 King of Kings DLC for EU4 and also consider subscribing I'm trying to get to 190,000 subs by the end of the year and in return I promise to give only quality content of course now let's check out our mission tree first we have a few easy missions we can do such as recover strength is basically doable before you uh, even pass the first month we just got to get two allies 90% of the time that's going to actually be Gazi Kumuns and Theodoro sometimes you can get other allies it's a little bit RNG but most of the times it's going to be these two here so we waited for a date. There you go. Second ally. Boom. Recover strength. That gives us core creation costs minus 10% and permanent claims on all of the Caucasus area here. So the provinces we're going to get those free fortifications. OP fortifications are also the provinces that we have permanent cores on. Uh, claims on. Which means minus 25% cheaper core creation for these provinces. With the minus 10 that we got from the mission. 35% cheaper to core these provinces essentially. Not to mention we also start not only with defensiveness but infantry combat ability from the day one of the campaign so it really makes the Georgian armies stand out in this particular region take note we do start with the uh, Georgian crisis and it slowly ticks up essentially what happens is it's gonna not be good for us so we want to prevent that the way you prevent that is by having prevented the collapse now this here is not so hard to do actually Vagtag succession is likely the toughest bit you can do it fairly early on by just spending your military points and uh, increasing or strengthening your government and then you can do the first mission divided uh, house here is also fairly easy to do we just got to integrate our vassal in Samske and then we can prevent the collapse once we get one stability and essentially no rebels and uh, loyal estates speaking of estates let's actually set up our estates here it's gonna be fairly standard for the uh, Georgians with the estates obviously with the plus one mana points for each of the estates from the get-go and we're gonna be summoning the diet here too take note the lower your influence the more lands you're gonna take when you annex stuff from other countries on annex provinces so we're not gonna give the rest of the privileges we'll give the rest of the privileges after our first couple of wars or actually after our first war so we can take some lands and grow our crownless from five percent to 15 or so percent so also get our rivals here Shervan is numero uno Karakoyunlu of course two and Primia no actually Akoyunlu is probably a better rival our economy is dog shit so keep that in mind though we're gonna 
going to get a uh, military advisor only for now and we're going to focus on military since we want to get as much as possible we'll also get a royal marriage with our uh, vassal here in samsuke i am going to scornfully insult uh, ako yunlu so i get 10 power projection which means i get a little bit more morale of armies and a few other bonuses we want to get our power projection above 50 the sooner the better right and we're also going to get a mercenary company in tbilisi plus i'm going to convert my leader into a generalus okay it's not too bad two siege two shock is actually pretty decent i could try and get an alliance with a jam so to get that i need to get a little bit more relations what i could do is send a scornful insult to um to karako yunlu once i get one prestige or really just above zero zero point zero one and then i can send the scornful insult that's gonna give me some relations with the uh, jam i could also improve with them in the meanwhile my main alliance goals are gonna be initially a jam and then i'm gonna try and switch on over and get muscovy as my main primary ally which i'm gonna use in my wars against the ottomans and so on right because essentially we also want to form the byzantine empire once the byzantines are no more remember that we can essentially become the byzantines we got the throne of the romans here that allows us to move our culture to the byzantine culture group so georgian is going to be taken over from here and it's going to be added to the greek byzantine or byzantine uh, culture group right which includes trebizond and so on speaking of we do start with an alliance with trebizond and we have a mission revolving around that deal with the komneni if we uh, keep this alliance and we get 190 relations and 20 favors we can make them a vassal with the zero aggressive expansion so of course we're going to be doing that or at least we're going to try and do that right as with everything in this game rng can kick your butt in my case uh, a jam ally travan so i would have to fight against a jam which i'm trying to get as an ally i'd rather not do that so maybe i'll just attack circassia for now their lands are not as great so it is pretty poo poo from that perspective but better than nothing we can still get some crownlands from uh, annexing their provinces and it opens up the way for expansion into the great horde into crimea as well we may be even able to attack crimea before they become a tributary or a vassal of the ottomans right also start improving relations with everybody around that we need to improve relations with and i'm going to be currying favors with trebizond so i can make them my vassal a little bit quick seems like the byzantines are having some issues with the union of the churches feels billy at man by the way guys i'm recording this um one day before i'm going for my surgery i'm not, i'm getting um uh, my gallbladder removed so scared you guys have no idea how scared i am so it might show in the video in case you're wondering why i might be a little bit pale face maybe it's because you white loot I, I don't know it's got to be done the pain is literally unbearable at this point. and i'm saying this also because um i might not be making videos for a while for a few weeks i guess so my legitimacy went down a lot so i'm not gonna do strength and uh government just yet i'll do it once we go up to uh 80 i'm actually gonna send a scornful insult to chandar since um that's gonna give me relations with trebizond so we already up at 190 relations without even improving with them relations we've just been currying favors eureka let's uh, do as a piss deal curious how much crowns we're gonna get let's see so from this we're getting roughly five six percent crowns if i'm not mistaken i think so let's check now is a moment of the truth okay so we did get five percent crowns but then that was taken away by the fact that we got five percent given out to the cossacks so we ended up with just six percent so now we got step provinces though three of them for that matter and the cossacks estate which is not a bad estate overall but we do still need to expand my troops are marching towards the border with uh shirvan so let's uh, set up shaki as the war target call in uh gazi Kumunts. we're not co-belligerating a jam because they would call in nogai and akoyunlu and then we would basically just collapse and let's pray g that we win this war this is not going to be an easy one so the reality is that we have to fight this a little bit tactically right what i mean by that is when the enemy starts to attack us retreat in our fortifications let them siege those fortifications and attack them when they are sieging those fortifications that would be the standard play as georgia at the start and you really do need to expand fast because if you don't get the circassian lands you don't get the trebizond vassal you don't get shervan early on you will end up getting wiped out by the ottomans getting wiped out by karakoyunlu persia or anybody else that's big that will grow in the meanwhile so it is absolutely vital that you push these first five six years as much as you can then you can chill build up your economy follow your mission tree and so on but you need the land at the start i got so many mixed feelings about this guy five five is good but freaking one admin is dog shit do i keep this dude uh indecisive corpidos that's uh that's a georgian name it's in fact one of the most popular georgian names in existence one out of 95 kids has that name parent so now the entire shervani army is here which means 
our ally could potentially wipe them out if they merge their units here. But we want to siege this down at the same time we don't want to get wiped out by a gem. Because if they attack us when we're sieging down Shervan we would be at a massive disadvantage. I feel like I should really just get a few more units. Maybe a mercenary company would work. Yeah what about the Laz Auxiliaries? These guys seem pretty decent. One siege, three shock, not bad at all. Let me get some loans and let's get those Lazy Lazy Boyos. Boom shakalaka. It's worth it even if we trash our economy a little bit we'll fix it as we go along in the campaign. Everything is going to be fine. They all started sieging down uh, Gazi Kumuns and their vassal which makes sense. The way the AI works is they target the weakest uh, uh, enemy in uh, an alliance set first. In that case that would be Gazi Kumuns right on my alliance set. But the added bonus for that is that I might be able to block them off when I get Shervan so it's going to be a little bit easier maybe to um, not necessarily stack wipe but win a few engagements here. Hopefully stack wipe. That would be awesome. Fair. All right. Step one has been done. Let's march on over. We got another four, five thousand, six thousand units from uh, our oh, 50, 5,000 units from uh, our ally. So that's Gucci. And this is a mountain fort, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. <laughs> That's gonna be juicy. Probably should wait for the rest of my armies to get there though first. Nah, we're gonna be fine. Give me some good juicy dice rolls, please. Hell yeah. And that's it. That's what we won. We literally freaking won. They got stacked. Oh my freaking god. We literally won the freaking war. Dude, what? We literally freaking won this. Bro, this has got to be one of the best freaking runs I had so far. Way better than my uh my trial runs. Uh tell you what, because this is not a bad run, and I think a lot of people might struggle as the Georgians in their games. What I'm gonna do is um I'm gonna make the same available you guys all you need to do is you're gonna have to just join my discord and you can get it from there that's it now let's go over and siege down a jam so we get some cash in the process curious if we can get money after getting this one fort probably not much oh yeah only six i want to get more i want to get a lot more i'm gonna go for their capital and i'm gonna try and wipe out their uh newly established army here can you imagine if historically the georgians actually managed to get their schnapps together after getting destroyed by the mongols destroyed by the turks destroyed by basically everybody around them you know armenia and georgia have actually had some of the worst rng in history real life rng i'm talking about here not actually you know e4 rng obviously also big kudos to paradox for uh making one of the coolest sprites holy mother man i wish this was uh the case with like the byzantines and maybe like a unique seljuk turk sprite so whenever you form the seljuk empire as karakoyulu and schnapps you can um you know you get a proper awesome sprite that would be cool can we get war reps to we can oh can we cancel alliance too uh bring this guy back thank you very much and that ya go give me my money need to fix my economy because i've got a fuck ton of loans right now boom do that never core that okay cool go take all of this for myself thank you very much i need it and i deserve it oh but you didn't give guys you can nothing bro no problem i'm gonna give them a cancellation of alliance because i'm gonna take these lands for myself time to give out the rest of the privileges religious diplomats is a month of course in pretty much any game you might have expansion is military is also really good since we're gonna essentially fight pretty much only non-orthodox nations but we're gonna give this before we start the next war not just yet increase levies is a big one since it allows us to get more manpower we also want to get the burger financial demands together with the uh, economic freedom and the rest of the holy trinity here including clerical education and so on i probably should have waited with the court position because i have below 30 nobility loyalty so i'm actually getting a debuff now so yeah i definitely should have waited since we do have have the cossacks we're gonna give self-governance we're gonna establish the cossack regiments but not just yet we're gonna do that after we get a little bit more crownlands the recruit cossack leader for the army tradition and leader shock is pretty vital as well and in essence as long as you have above 50 percent loyalty equilibrium you should be fine for the first phase of the campaign of course we're also gonna give the advisor cost reduction uh, privileges make sure you have enough slots though for the burgers i don't have enough so i'm gonna keep the last one open i'm not gonna give the burgers um reduction uh, for the advisor just yet okay we also went up to 80 legitimacy so we can go up to 90 and do Vakrag's succession. I think that's what you call it, right? I have a little bit of a dilemma. So I want to attack Karakoyunlu because my truce is over with them. You start with the five years truce with Karakoyunlu. Now the question is though, do I attack them now considering it's June or do I wait until November so I can pick up 5% more crownlands? They're also at war with Mushasha. So they're definitely losing units. I think I'm just going to wait it out and after uh, November I'm just going to attack them. I really need to take the northern 
bits that they have here and uh, start snaking my way into bit list too. But you know, grabbing uh, Armenian bits is gonna do another one of my mission. We can restore the Byzantine Empire, so apparently they got wiped out by the Ottomans. Feels really bliat, man. It is like that though. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put that on our list to do, of course. Forming Byzantium as Georgia is a no-brainer, really. Hey, we also cored this bit up, so uh, now we can do this: make this a full staten, and then lower the autonomy. So double whammy on this one, boys. Double whammy. Wait, we know we gotta wait for a little bit longer, don't we? Make this one a state too, actually. So there you go. Awesome. Summon Zedietus. Number of allies three. That's doable. That's actually doable. Let's do that. Let's also seize crownlands, fight off the rebels. We got way more nations we can ally now, including the former enemies of Ajam. I guess you could say that we got ourselves into a uh, jam <laughs> diplomatically here. Do they want to jam it out with us against Karakoyim? Apparently they don't. They have a truce with them or something? I did wait one extra month so I can lower the autonomy here. This way I can increase my land force limit after lowering said autonomy. And that means I can recruit more units or we went up to 14. I guess I can recruit more once I finish these here. But that being said, let's attack Yes, Set up Ganja as the war target. Poland Trebizond, why not? What kind of a freaking peace deal do these guys do? The Gazi Kamuns is a tributary of the Great Horde and Avaria is a vassal of the Great Horde. What? Okay. I mean, to put it into perspective, I can attack Gazi Kamuns and then I fight the Great Horde too and I don't need to fight Great Horde's allies of Karaman and Uzbek. So it's not so bad overall. And I can just take the two provinces I need from the Great Horde, Terek and Tarki, which is in the Caucasus uh, areas, right? Dude, are you kidding me? My leader just died and he was the one sieging down this province. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is just disgusting right now, man. Holy mother. Oh, we got how many years Regency? 11 freaking years? Actually, she's not too bad. 544? Four, four. Yeah, you know what? Maybe this is not so bad overall. I'm actually gonna backtrack over here so I can um, uh, wipe out the army they have sieging down Shervan before they actually take over Shervan. That's like half of their soldiers, isn't it? 11,000. Yeah, that is half of their soldiers. Okay, cool. Come on, give me them soldier rhinos. <laughs> yeah, boy. Bye bye. This is a nice annoying, are you? Wait, what? A jam broke the alliance with us. They made me their rival? Dude, come on, a jam. I'm not even that big to be a rival. What the hell is wrong with these people, bro? You know what? That pissed me off so much. I'm actually going to attack them after because I'm going to have a border with them after. <laughs> Time to also make full cores out of uh, Shervani because, and I'm fairly certain we can probably do a peace deal now. But uh, yeah, I guess not because they're attacking me. So that's an ongoing battle. Oh, that is really bad. Oh, we did win though. Right, okay. That's actually a a lot of um, Trebizond and uh, Samskid that did most of the heavy lift. Kudos to those boyos. Come on, we got to finish this war quickly. How close are we to getting what we want? We want all the money. We definitely want all the money, right? Because uh, we need to fix our economy. And there you go, 476 days, and that is now ours. Guess we can take what we want, yes. But I want more. I want our Dabil as well, and I want Koi. Koi fish and our Dabil, for sure I want those. But maybe if I actually just wipe out some of their troops, they're gonna give me what I want. Now we can do it, 88, 120, 121 we are literally on the edge here we could push and get more we could push and get more. should i instead of money take tabriz and this area maybe take tabriz and a little bit of money we can fix our economy after once we've uh you know centralized the country a little bit more and taking land always equals getting richer faster and stronger faster so less of an issue now we can also do queen tamar's ambition gain armenian as an accepted culture we also get 10 percent more manpower from armenian provinces or better yet provinces that are have accepted cultures, permanent claim on Azerbaijan, and a uh, discipline advisor that is 75% cheaper. Holy shit. How cheap is that guy? He is basically the same like a level one advisor. Wait, is that the guy? Yeah, that's the guy. Make a Jamius our new rival now, and Genoa Crimea. I'm gonna go with um, Great Horde as this third rival. And I love the new edicts. Look at that. Now I know to cancel this over here because it's been there for a while. Also do Aziz, and let's crush the rebel scumbags. We also have above 150 development so we can get the independent and Grand Company, as well as a brand new free company now. Oh man, I knew I should have taken these two. I got permanent claims on these. Brother, that was a mistake. I should have taken at least one more province instead of the money. Yeah, I'm definitely deleting this free company since we don't have any manpower pool left in it and I'm gonna get the Grand Company, I think, after when I need to start my next war. We likely will chill for a bit though until we uh, can attack Gazi Kumuns or maybe I can attack Gazi Kumuns via Biapas because they're allied to each other. Even though I take a little bit of extra 
of expansion, I can get rid of them. So not forget to lower the autonomy in all the provinces that we can lower it in. Lowering autonomy will improve your economy and improve your manpower as well as land force limit abilities. Let's not waste our diplomat, see who we can improve relations with or get a spy network in. Either one of those works for me. And what the hell? Did they just give back, back to Kazikomons? I guess they did. Damn. There's a good and a bad thing with uh, Akko Yunlu becoming an ally of the Ottomans. Reality is that you kind of want this to happen, right? Of course, it means that we cannot attack Akko Yunlu, but it also means that uh, the Ottomans are not going to be at the border with us faster because if they don't ally Akko Yunlu, they will destroy Akko Yunlu. And as consequence, they're going to be at your borders and destroy you afterwards very quickly, you know? By them not doing that, we get the time we need to uh, build up our power base and just be ready for a war with the Ottomans in the 60s, 1460s, 70s or so. So now the cool thing is that uh, we're integrating our vassal of Samske and the thing is it's automatic 100% because we have cores on both of their provinces. That being said, I did not give the nobility integration policy uh, privilege actually for the estates because once we do a house divided mission, it also removes the annexed vassal modifier, this one over here, and I didn't need the privilege just for one vassal that I was going to integrate anyway. It's pointless, right? Since it's automatically instantly integrated the vassal. Now to prevent the collapse, I think all we need is uh, just one stability, if I'm not mistaken, right left. And we can do one stab. To get one more, we need 100 more mana points. I'm going to get the Gates of Alexander, which gives me more permanent claims around the areas around me. Now, if we had two subjects, that means if we didn't integrate Samske and we finished vassalizing Trebizond, which we're really close to, by the way, because we're getting 0.57 favors each month, which is a ton. But I didn't do that. I don't care about it too much, to be honest with you. I'm not going to annex any vassals anytime soon, so it's irrelevant in my opinion. If you want to min-max, obviously, you should wait until you get, um, you know, vassals so you can get that extra modifier, obviously. But now we did prevent the collapse, which is giving us a yearly tax of flat 12 ducats, plus as well global prosperity growth, plus one for the next 15 years. Absolutely delicious. Now, in this next war, we're going to just need to control Sarai, nothing else. And then we get until the death of our uh, current leader. Wait, is that the leader or the... It's the consort? Oh, snaps. That's only seven years. Shock damage plus 10% for seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Better than nothing, I guess, right? Also, take note, if we get heirs of the Seljuks, which means we need to take two more provinces, we get a subjugation CB on all the Persian nations as long as we have more development than they have. It means this war is going to be very nice. Let's go. And check out all the claims that we have, boys. Look at all those juicy claims. You gotta be really careful when fighting against hordes because they have extra shock damage that they inflict on your units when fighting in flat terrain. That's why we want to choose our battle. So like a mountain battle, it means we will actually stack wipe their armies. So we're going to try and push for this particular battle in Alania, but they likely will run away. Let's see what happens. No, I was wrong. They are brave and stupid, brave and stupid, both at the same time, really. Karaki only declared on his and Kaifa. Oh, how are you guys still declaring on nations? I literally wiped out your freaking schnapps, bro. Quiconius annexationus. Nobody gives a schnapps. Holy mother. Nobody actually cares about us annexing their friendos in Gazikamu. Who would have thought? Oh, you made a mistake, great horde. You attack my fort in a in a mountain fort or so you die speaking of let's also get rid of the rebellion ski we have a few of them people really don't like getting conquered for some reason i cannot understand why at all it's beyond me why that would happen why people would not be happy with getting conquered all right the bane of the kagan so we can get 100 devastation in sarai and morale damage for the next 25 years okay that's pretty good actually second one 250 ducats and some uh, uh development in our capital or aggressive expansion impact reduction and diplomatic power. I don't really care about aggressive expansion impact to be fair. The reason for that is because obviously I'm expanding into areas which are of different religions. I'm talking Orthodox, Copts, Sunnis, Shias and different cultures. I mean look at this. Three quarters of them are in the Iranian group, the other one's Turkish group, the other one's Caucasian group. So it's it's, it's not any sort of in Tatar as well, right? So it's really a question between the morale damage, which is huge by the way, and army professionalism, or this. Truth is, 
I do need the ducts. I really do need the ducts. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the duct. Screw it. I know, I know. Morales damages would be pretty cool. Now we can also get some uh, prosperity. Holy schnabadog. Prosperity. And renaissance as well. Georgian vineyards, we just have to have four base production and the manufacturing in five of our wine producing provinces. Until the end of the game, we get local goods produced plus 25 and building manufacturers in wine provinces gives one extra local development to production. Revive nature literature gives cost of uh, advisor with rulers culture and reform progress and splendor. We just have to embrace renaissance and have 50 prestige and have a specific advisor. Okay, that's not too bad. Possible buildings until the end of the game plus one. Pretty freaking good as well. It's only for certain areas though. Theodosian Inquisitor also provides patriarchal authority is really nice. I wish that was the case for all orthodox nations, not just this. Patriarchate of uh, Georgia depends on whatever we uh, have as our icon though. Okay, now let's get more money from them and the two provinces we want to get. Still nobody gives a schnapps. Amazing. Love it. I got to love it. And that's almost enough to pay off for most of our loans. We we really went full balls deep in these freaking loans. That's for sure. There you go. Back to just the 1% loaners. Way better. I know. I know what you guys are going to be going like. And Ludi, you should go bro for the morale damage. Bro, what the fuck mean? Like, don't get me wrong. The morale damage is awesome and everything. But by the time I have to actually fight the big boys, the Ottomans, I'm not going to worry about that shit because I'm going to A, have an alliance with the Muscovites and B, have a really freaking strong army. So I'm not planning to attack them right now, right? Got bigger fish to fry right now, boys. Bigger fish to fry. I'm frying the Persian fish to be more precise. Okay, uh, that is... Wait, do they have any cores actually? They have one core. Is that a lot? It's 10 development. Screw that. No. Folius annexationist. Hell yeah. These are Ardabili separatists. Ardabil. Oh shit. Okay. So they might still go into the provinces of these guys and they might have to fight them. I'll, I'll keep it as it is then. Now we can do reclaim Shervan. We get one random development in the Shervani area. Local missionary strength plus 3% and permanent claims on Tabaristan and Jirambrjubland. That's uh, that's how you pronounce. That's They get upset if you don't pronounce it the right way. Okay. That's what happens. They get upset. Oh, it just occurred to me. We have all the Caucasian provinces now. Hell yeah, boys. Okay, we can also deal with the Komnenos now since we increased our trust relations and uh, favors with them. So they are now our Vasalicus. Hails to the yes. So we're going to be able to integrate these guys in uh, 10 years from now. For now, though, they are a juicy level 3 fortification in a mountain protecting our western border. So we'll keep them there. Plus, by doing that, we got more permanent claims on uh, these juicy lands here. So we got permanent claims on everywhere around us. Also very important guys to lower the autonomy. Do this as often as you can. Obviously lower autonomy means more income, more manpower, more land force limit like I said already. But more than that, the lower the autonomy you have, the more friends you're gonna get. That's right. The secret to having friendships as an E4 player is having less autonomy. If you have zero autonomy, you can have a maximum of six friends provided that they are not in the top eight great powers. I'm talking about in-game friends. What did you think? Do you think you can have real life friends just like that? What's wrong with you? Oh, we got 27% land controlled by the crown. That's awesome. Yeah, so now that we uh, got the Caucasian provinces uh, under our control, we're gonna just chill. We have to fix our economy, which is fine now. We only have the 1% loners, so we're good. We're on the right track. We have enough manpower as well. We're pretty decent in that particular perspective, so we're gonna get some more units for that matter now. Make sure we go up to our max land for its limit so we get ready for whatever wars we're gonna do, and we're gonna also so maybe do a few cheeky words here whenever the chance arises. Like now, for example, Karakoyunlu and Mushesha wouldn't join. Okay, seriously. This is like an actual legitimate easy moment for us to attack Mazandran. Take note, when it comes to the uh, mission with Muscovy, you have two choices. Option number one, you ally the Muscovites and then you get 20 Strelsi units as well as uh, plus one diplo relations for as long as you have the alliance with the Muscovites. Or option number two, you rival the Muscovites and you get a restoration of union on Muscovy, which you can enforce, of course, whenever you want to. Now, I am going to actually ally them for now. First off, I can use them in my wars and uh, they can come in handy. And if I really need to and everything fucks up, then I can get 20 free units in my capital. So that's 20,000 manpower out of the freaking blue. That's green alien space boys that fight for the Georgian crown. You know what I mean? I'm not going to click this just yet, though. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, the PU would be 10 times better than getting the Strelsi. That's true. That's true. That's why I haven't clicked this mission yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to gun for the PU or if I'm just going to get the Strelsi, to be fair. You know, looking at the mission tree, claim-wise, we freaking get claims on this entire freaking area. That's pretty massive, dude. Holy shit. Oh, hot damn. The Iberian Wedding 
triggered already. That was pretty fast. Aragon is a junior partner of Castile now. So uh, yeah, yeah, we got a pretty strong Western Europe, I guess. Actually, France took the coastline of the Aragonese. Okay, the plot thickens. Uh, that is for sure. We've also uh, started improving our economy considerably. We've devved up a lot as well. We're trying to spawn in Renaissance in our capital. And we took a few loans. And we got another heir. Who is another 155 with the same name. What the fuck? This is literally a deja vu moment right there. Actually deja This guy's name is deja vu in fact for that matter. So he's got the same freaking. The exact same ones as his dad. What? Is that scripted in? Or what the hell is going on here? I'm actually confused now. The time has come for the second war against Karakoyunlu. We're going to cobladrate Mazandaran. Because we're going to be uh, annexing a lot of provinces we're gonna be uh we're gonna be getting real chunky after these few wars and this is uh, gonna be an easy one seven thousand with eight thousand units against 24 of ours and we can actually get more we can get up to thirty-two thousand. actually you know what maybe i should get some more units come on forticus fall already there you go 305 days is actually pretty not bad considering i usually get them at 400 plus did we just lose one of our best generals i think we did didn't we oh my god what is up dude this nation's got really freaking good generals and heirs in general in general the generals yeah in general okay so in this war i'm not taking too much stuff because once i take these two provinces from them i'm gonna be able to uh, get claims on every single province that they have a core on so even if say they have provinces that they don't own but they have a core on i'm gonna get claims on those that's how freaking awesome the next mission is a great synod five patriarchal or one stability hell yeah the stability boys no brainer and boy do they fall when they're disunited like this sure why would you defend your homies right when you can just uh get schnapple duped one at a freaking time boys can i even take this should be okay right because we have a sea tile no we need to have rush oh that is so dumb though i forgot the sea the caspian sea doesn't really count here well that's poop isn't it they are cobaladrated so maybe i can vassalize them 45 aggressive expansion is really okay as georgia we're actually getting a decent amount of manpower man 455 recovered per month with just the caucasus provinces so we're doing these guys first because they are not the main target there you go oh shit oh gotta bring my units back oh no my units are stuck there now oh this is really bad this is actually really bad <laughs> it's actually really really bad um can i get military access through you guys yeah maybe okay we might be fine we'll go through the south here so i'm also taking these three provinces because i need these three for another mission afterwards all the money we're also getting uh war reparations and uh, the yago boys do we have a coalition i forgot to check actually um great horde a jam no problem because we're going to be attacking great horde very very soon can i call in anybody i would love to call in the must Muscovites, but they have a thousand ducats in debt. Well, that does sound like the Muscovites for sure. Let's core everything quickly. Let's check our missions as well. Heirs of the Seljuks. So, if we complete this mission with no country with the capital in the Persia region having more total development than us, we gain a subjugation CB on all countries with their capital in Persia. That is insane. Basically, get a subjugation CB on a gem, which just ally the Ottomans. Holy fuck, this RNG, bro, for real. We also get some uh, military mana and um, morale of armies and recovery speed that's not bad holy shit when did this happen bro actually when did this happen that's my way in right now oh cool we can do this mission as well now nice so we're advancing down this particular line which is a really good line to be advancing down wait a second we get 25 permanent power projection from taking the coastline of anatolia dude that is a lot of power projection holy shit okay let's see uh how we're gonna deal with the subjugations because we got subjugations against all of these juice lords here even these bad boys but there's still a sub of the Timurid, so we gotta wait until the Timurids break apart, essentially. That's Gucci Smorducci. Not gonna cobladrate, definitely not gonna cobladrate, but I am going to advance here. The hordes never freaking learn. Once more, we're attacking them in a mountain province, so literally just look at that, bro. Look at freaking that. We wiped out their entire freaking army. You suck, gold Golden Horde. Oh, dude, it is so annoying. These guys unconditionally surrendered, so now I have to piece them out, but I also want to get money from the Great Horde, so I'm waiting for these forts the foe so i can actually get anything from them essentially right do i leave their cores i'm not gonna vassalize i might as well just cancel the cores doesn't make any difference doki boys give me your money 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 yeah we're we're trying to get money so we can upgrade that monument in our capital so we can actually do what i intended to do in the first place with this video right we might just loan up be fair to get max usage out of it really because the sooner you get it maxed out the better it is in my opinion i think we're missing like uh two provinces 
provinces and then we just uh yeah i think two provinces erzin can and yeah barely here and then we can do the next mission here let me double check yep boy i wish the ottomans didn't take those two we're gonna have to have a massive war against them and when we do we're gonna take the coastline as well and try and snake our way to constantinople so we can release the byzantines and feed them the course does rabba have a core of uh iraq that is the real question do they have a core they don't they only have syria which is about to get integrated so when that happens i'm gonna release syria from al raqqa so i can cancel this quest speak of jedebel let's release jedebel syria syria one of the best vassals in the game by far look at all the cords we got now holy schnagadogs boy oh man we've had so many years in which we didn't do schnapps i don't even know what else to say now it's it's been a boring few years but it's okay because despite not doing anything in game i actually made myself a coffee finished the coffee i had some food and um yeah that's about it that's all i did <laughs> But hey, we've managed to pay off all of our loans. We managed to get this upgraded to level two. So we're very close to getting the entire region to level three then. And best part is that these guys are going to get schnapps. Once they do get schnapps, I'm going to switch on over and get that stuff for myself. Also, I'm very close to vassalizing these guys diplomatically. Look at all these juicy modifiers here. The only problem is that they are at war. So I got to wait until they finish their war with the Genoese and then I can diplo vassalize. Also want to attack the Genoese, but the Ottomans are likely going to take all of that. So the Great Horde also went from uh, being the biggest bad boy in the area to being nobody so now let's go ahead and sell some titles and then we can also get some loans and that is very close to us getting what we want to get so let's get some more of this oh, i'm getting a lot of inflation and a lot of extra loans but i want to upgrade this hello I'm gonna use some of that manpower we're not attacking anybody we're chilling we're absolutely chilling nothing else oh they peaced out and i can bully them into giving me azov should i do that or should i attack you know what i'm gonna attack attack simply because I realize they're gonna unsiege Matregra so there's a chance I can take more than just one province from them that would be awesome if I can take Matregra and Azov or or even all three of them if I could right and I do see an opportunity here a freaking insanely huge up oh my god dude my truce over it is holy shit this is gonna be an insane vassal buffer even I could call it demand their full land they lost all their provinces back in Italy bro holy mother oh that was the easiest land grab in history now we literally just need need Kafa more to do the other mission so we really need to attack the Ottomans to do two missions by the taking these lands and these actually three missions because we take the coastline too right yeah we got to gear ourselves up for that then I think I'm gonna wait until I finish all of my uh upgrades over here first in the fortification Hormagor boys Hormagor let's uh let's uh speed this up a little bit shall we so I'm gonna do a this and the this and the what is that four tax and tau sure go for four tax and tau we had to do that do do is good Booty bee bee boo and schnocky donk here okay now uh pay off most of those loans we actually have a positive and the best thing ever guys we did it we got the monument to level three so now yes i am aware i basically used up a lot of manpower and destroyed my economy to get it this fast but it's fine we fixed our economy in the meanwhile and now every single province in the caucasus area has a fort but that being said we're only paying 3.45 ducats for 28 fortifications big thing Thanks to today's sponsor, all of my neighbors, which I attacked for financial wars a lot. But now we can just chill here, do nothing. And anybody trying to attack us is going to have to go through all of these freaking fortifications, every single one of them. And not to mention, they all have a bonuses. So we got roughly 121% defensiveness in every province without the privilege, without the edict, that is. So if we were to say switch on over, say to here, defensiveness edict, Buyashnokos, we got 100 and 54 defensiveness. <laughs> so fucking insane to me man not to mention remember this affects everything as well local assault fort ability minus 75 and yes it is capped i think at a certain percentage that's why we're still paying 0.1 for each fortification rather than actually paying zero but that's just you know it's fine don't worry about it too much i really hope you guys enjoyed this run i had a lot of fun playing it it's a little bit different i don't know if i'll continue this though because i have a lot of freaking games i already started but if there's support for it sure i might give it a try don't forget to also subscribe if you enjoy the content and until the next time check out this awesome byzantine run and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 